Hello, it's Ben Recap again. Today, I'm going to explain a 2016 Chinese fantasy movie called League of Gods. Sit back and enjoy. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. In the beginning, the world was full of possibilities for all living creatures. But desires and ambition drove humans to own the whole world and war began. Some got devoured by darkness some became guardians of light. A war to seal the fate of all humanity is imminent. During the rule of King Zhu an official enters his imperial bedroom and is engulfed by the monstrous tales of Daji, his concubine. Outside the city, warriors riding a metal wagon, warriors discuss their mission to rescue the Grand Elder of the Invisible Tribe before dawn. A warrior says to the army that King Zhu has slaughtered numerous adept tribes. He says King Zhu is bewitched by Daji and he is merely a puppet of the Nine-Tail Fox. The warrior asks the captain why they can't take the opportunity to kill the evil fox and the captain says to him that only Master Jung can kill the ancient fox demon. The captain tells Lei of the Wing Adept tribe not to use his adept power when they get to their destination as Daji can sense the slightest surge of power. Jiang Zia appears to them and tells them that King Zhoa made a devilish deal with a supreme demon when he was younger and to gain the world. He tells them that when King Zhu was younger he sold his own body, allowing himself to be possessed by the Black Dragon. Jiang Zia tells them the Nine-Tail Fox isn't the biggest threat but the Black Dragon. He says when the three sound converges, the Black Dragon descends and great darkness will come upon the world for 18,000 years. Jiang Zia says the Grand Elder is the only one that knows the secret to killing the Black Dragon, and he swiftly departs riding his crane. Back in the city King Shu and Daji hold a festival and the warriors sneak into the Imperial Prison. During the festival, Daji presents the chain chief of the Invisible People to King Shu as a present. While the captain plans his attack, Li Xianzi hears the invisible tribe men calling and uses his powers to track them to a cell. Li Xianzi runs towards the entrance and the prison guards block his way. He fights multiple prison guards. The warriors fight with him. The warriors defeat the prison guards and head to the cell the invisible tribe's men are kept. King Zhu tells Daji he has decimated the invisible tribe and has no need for their elder. But Daji insists he can be used by some people to threaten them because his eyes can see the past and the future. Unable to open the cell, Lei uses his adept power to destroy metal bars that seal the invisible people, even though he was warned not to. Li Xianzi's powers attract Chen Gongbao's attention and he rides on his black leopard to go after them. King Zhu asks the chief to tell his future and he shows him a vision of himself pleading and disintegrating away causing Daji and King Zhu to order his guards to remove the chief's eyes. The invisible people tell the warriors that the chief was taken by Zhu's men, and they say to the captain that the chief wanted them to save the children first. As they try to escape with the warriors myriad of the invisible people are killed by the more guards. The warriors are ambushed by the prison guards. The warriors form a shield protecting themselves from the arrows. The warriors successfully escape with the invisible children who use their powers to teleport them to a different location the royal court sewer. The warriors turn their shields into a boat to enable them to escape. Chen Gong Bao as well as the prison guard soon start to attack the warriors and children. To stop Shen Gong Bao from advancing toward them Li Xianzi destroys a wall and creates a barrier. As Li Xianzi and Jai Fa speak, he explains to him how his father was killed by an invading army that destroyed most of the wing adepts and his father's wings were torn off his back. Back at the palace, Jiang Zi arrives on his crane after freezing time to interrupt the festival. Zhu attacks Jiang Zia with his dragon but he overpowers him. As Jiang Zia avoids Daji's tail, she casts a reverse aging curse on him, and the time freezing stops. To save him, the chief digs out one of his eyes and throws it toward Daji who has her tail wrapped around Jiang Zia. Scared for their lives all the subjects at the festival run out. Li Xianyi and the captain walk in, and see Daji attacking Jiang Zia. Li Xianzi blasts Daji with his lightning powers. King Xu tells Jai Fa to go home and tell General Jai that he will race Siki to the ground but Jai Fa tells him the Jai clan warriors are well trained. In an attempt to save them all the chief sacrifices himself. They all fly off on Jiang Zia's crane with one of the chief's eyes, while the other hand is obtained by Daji. Daji tells King Xu that they are halfway to victory. The warriors return to their capital. Jiang Zia tells King Jai Chang that the chief's eyes stores everything he has ever seen, as he is the only one who has ever seen the Black Dragon's nemesis. Jiang Zia becomes younger, and he says that the reverse aging curse cast on him reverses his age every time he uses his powers, 
and once he uses all his energy his primordial spirit will varnish. Jiang Zia and King Jai Chang realize that the Black Dragon can only be destroyed by using a sword known as the Sword of Light, which can only be used by a chosen hero the Golden Dragon and they must find the sword before the suns converge, in which the Black Dragon will be released. Zia, King Zhu, Shen Gong Bao, and some subjects also use the Chief's Eye to find out that only the Sword of Light can defeat the Black Dragon and only the gold dragon is capable of mastering the sword. The sword has tremendous power, which can be destructive. Its power depends on the heart of the person using the sword. Li Xinzi tries to grow wings, as he tries to fly off a cliff. He remembers his father telling him to fly before Shen Gong Bao tears off his wing. While having this memory Li Xinzi falls to the ground. Jiang Zia hands the map of the Sword of Light to Li Xinyi, and he volunteers to find the sword. Jiang Zia summons an egg from the well, out of which Naza hatches and causes mischief. Jiang Zia tells Li Xinzi that Naza is his companion for the journey. He also tells him to take three gifts from the well. Naza and Li Xinzi depart into a wasteland. Shen Gong Bao constructs and animates an automaton, instructing her to find and report Li Xinzi's whereabouts. The first of Jiang Zia's gifts, a one-eyed plant arrogantly gives Li Xinzi advice. Naza plays with the plant hence he gets into an altercation with Li Xinzi. Soon a legendary desert centipede attracted by the magic grass scent, chases and attacks them. Naza and Lei split, but since Naza has the one-eyed plant, the centipede chases Naza. Naza still running throws the plant at Lei, the centipede turns on Lei and chases Lei. While Naza lies on the floor exhausted, Lei throws the plant at Naza and he runs for his life, screaming help me. Lei tries to save Naza and electrocutes the centipede, killing it. Naza proceeds to steal from Li Xinzi the second gift, a baby dragon prince whose home was destroyed by Naza. The baby dragon prince calls Naza a bastard, and breathes out a gas which makes Naza unconscious, mumbling and turning it into an adult. Chick Grass tells Lei that Naza is always in an unstable state without his wind fire wheels. Naza wakes up tied up by the magic grass in a cave with Li Xinzi watching. The magic grass tells him he will let him go if he promises to go peacefully on the journey. Upon waking up Li Xinzi tells Naza that Master Jiang told him whoever tries to steal his pouch from him is his companion. Li Xinzi forces him to help him find the Sword of Light while promising him that he will help him find his fire wheels. Using a navigator given to Li Xinzi they travel three days and three nights. They encounter a collection of pillars in a marsh which eventually turns into a palace in a desert. In the desert palace is a hermit who manipulates sand with magic. The hermit while making his heavens bolt is interrupted by Naza who tries to steal it. Irritated he attacks Naza and Li Xinzi but he is defeated by both of them. The hermit is revealed to be Yang Jai and was sent there magically by Dolly after he tried to fight her. Li Xinzi gave him the last of Jiang Zia's gifts, his faithful dog, Sky Howler. Yang Jai and then leads them to find his golden armor. The navigator leads them to a new location where they are to find the port boat As they arrive at the port, Dala asks that they search for the port boat separately. Li Xinzi encounters an attractive woman by name of a blue butterfly who entertains children with glowing butterflies. Lei impresses her with his powers, as she leans in to see what he did again. She reads his mind. Blue Butterfly runs and delivers her findings to Shen Gong Bao. And he tells her by telepathy that she needs to follow him till he finds the porta boat before clearing her memory. Lei goes to find Lady Tei, a sorcerer, who has in her custody the porta boat. She orders Lei to look with his heart and not his eyes into a magic pot, where he sees a vision of Lady Tei and Jiang Zia talking about the porta boat. Lady Tei uses her powers to control Li Xinzi in the dreamland. After Lei is woken by the magic grass, Blue Butterfly comes in and says out loud that she is looking for the porta boat hence waking Lady Tei from the dreamland. Lady Tei violently holds the magic grass and he is attacked by Li Xinzi while Blue Butterfly steals the porta boat. As Lei and Blue Butterfly run, they see Dea and Lei tells him to run as well. They throw the tiny porta boat into the sea and it becomes a large boat. The ship is supposed to sail to any location that its user desires. While in the boat Naza torments the baby dragon prince, Blue Butterfly mentions the Sword of Light and ignites rage in Naza, who tries to attack her but he is hit by the prince's gas that puts him to sleep and turns him into a child again. Blue Butterfly and Li Xinzi admire the sunrise but Shen Gong Bao tries to take her memories away. Blue Butterfly wakes up and asks Lei whom he is, because she lost her memory. Blue Butterfly asks why the boat is headed toward the East Sea, and Lei reveals the baby dragon prince's desires prevail, 
and has sailed the ship to return to his father's palace. As he sings, his father, the Dragon King of the East Sea hears him, and orders his giant octopus to bring Naza and his son back to him. The octopus grabs Naza and the baby dragon prince, Lei tries to save him but the one-eyed magic grass says his destiny has returned to the sea and hence can't be saved as they would meet again soon. While in the sea, Naza is held in by the Dragon King's guard. Naza then orders the king to return his fire wheels to him. The king also demands his son from him. The Dragon King orders his guards to attack Naza, but he defeats them by urinating and passing gas at them. The Dragon King gives Naza the fire wheels and is given the baby dragon prince in exchange. With the fire wheels, Naza turns into an adult and flies away. The ship now flies through a mysterious cloud with pillars at each side. They arrive at the floating old city, which is now in ruins. Li Zinzi finds a solar bird he carved into the stone as a child and he remembers it's his former home. Lei tells Blue Butterfly that he's from the Wing tribe and on the flight ceremony. When he was six years old, his home was attacked by King Ju's forces and he lost the courage to spread his wings again. He says he fears that if he spread his wings someone he loves might get hurt again. And Blue Butterfly says promise you will fly with me. He remembers the saying, wherever there is solar bird, there is light and hope. Lei rearranges the solar bird and he finds the sword of light, which is guarded by several rapidly moving rings. Shen Gong Bao arrives with a fleet of flying ships, Blue Butterfly confesses to Lei that she was sent by Shen Gong Bao. Shen Gong Boa commands his forces to retrieve the Sword of Light, but Li Jinzi fights them off. He soon overpowers Li Jinzi. One of soldiers tries to take the sword but it drains him of his life. In exchange for Li Jinzi's life, Blue Butterfly retrieves the sword, but it inadvertently destroys the rings and blows Shen Gong Bao and his fleet away. Li Jinzi overcomes the moving rocks and catches Blue Butterfly. She tells him he's the only memory she wants to have. Before they crash, Li Jinzi grows new wings, Blue Butterfly is amazed at the wings, and Lei tells her I promise to fly with you. She tells him not to be sad for her that she has seen the sunrise. He carries her to see the sunset, but she dies and turns into a wooden mannequin. He leaves her to rest at the sword's island, taking the sword with him. As he notices the sun's beginning to converge, he hurries with Naza and Erling Shen, who has found his golden armor. Back to the capital, which is now under siege by another fleet of King Xu's flying ships under Dia's command. Jiang Jia struggles to protect the city from the flying ships as the reverse aging curse already affected him. The enemies make their way into the city. The warriors, the prince, and the king fight a great fight against the enemies. Daji uses her magic again to revive Shen Gong Bao, which turns him into an immortal warlord, a monster. The three heroes return with the Sword of Light to find Jiang Zia being reverted to a young boy. They fight Shen Gong Bao, who during the fight kills Jai Chang. With his dying breath, Jai Chang passes his command and the sword to his son, Jai Fa. Jai Fa rushes to the Spring of Life and dives in to charge the sword where he discovered that Master Jing has been captured by Dia. As they draw Shen Gong Bao into the Spring of Life, Jai Fa emerges as the Golden Dragon with his charged sword and new golden armor and kills the monster. The movie ends with Jai Fa mobilizing his forces for a counterattack and flying his fortress towards the Shang Kingdom while King Zhu turns into the Black Dragon awaiting for the heroes to attack, with a baby Jiang Zia in their possession.